Hey everyone, thank you for watching. So every so often, I've got notes because I've written so much down for this. Every so often I do these videos where I talk about money and business and work because most of you will know that I talk about bags and luxury fashion and cars and that's, that's fine. But I also like to talk about the money side of things because that's how you buy this stuff. And so for me to be able to talk about work and how you can get a pay rise and how you can get out of debt and things like that, they're really important to me because I can't, I, I would feel really weird if I was constantly talking about bags and never talking about how you get the money to buy the bags. So anyway, here's one for you. I thought we could talk about how you can find your dream job and really succeed at it. And I wanna share with you my um, kind of path, if you like, how I discovered or how I got to where I am, how I, how I realized what I needed to be doing in life and how I constantly make sure that it's right for me. So uh, kind of like my background to how I ended up doing what I am doing today. For any of you who are new or don't know this, so my day job is that I've got an at-home business with my husband and we both have a marketing agency and David does the analytical side of things and I do the creative and the account management side of things. So the kind of work that we do will be anything from like a new website design and build through to a campaign, whether it's adverts running in like press or digital online adverts, um, anything to do with the um, like the media buying of where those ads get placed or the demographic and the reach, David does all that, about working with the clients to work out who they want to see this advert and how we can make sure that that kind of person or that, that demographic sees it. And then I'm the person that works on the creative, but I'm also the account handler person. So I'm normally the one that will go out to meetings, meet clients, take a brief, come home, be the person that talks to the client. And then David does the, um, like the build in the background. Um, as I say, analytics, all of the numbers, all of the technical stuff, he does that. And then I do the design. And it works really well because we need each other to be able to do the job and it just, it, as a team, it works really well. But I get a lot of you asking how I knew what I wanted to do, how I, how I started the business, how I got clients, all of that kind of thing. So it kind of started when I went to university. I hit, okay, so here's the thing. And in this video, whether you are 18 and you don't know what you're gonna do with your life and it's giving you panic attacks, or whether you are 50 and you don't know what you're doing with your life and it's giving you panic attacks. There's something in here, I just wanna, I wanna talk to all of you if you're watching this because you're kind of re-evaluating your life and maybe you're not quite happy with it, you don't feel like fulfilled and happy and you wanna get some ideas. So the first thing I did, I, my, I knew I wanted to go to university and get a degree and I took a degree in business management because that gave quite a holistic view to the whole um, business environment. So it kind of went through HR, how HR works, marketing department, PR department, finance, accounts. Over the course of three years, they kind of, even law, like they, they went through every single element of business and how different sections of a business work. Um, and the great thing was at the end of it, it was almost like you'd had an insight into operations, finance, HR, marketing, and then it was really easy to, go, well, for me, it kind of felt quite easy to be able to look at that and go, I really enjoyed doing that module, therefore maybe I wanna expand more into that. And marketing was something that I always really enjoyed because of the creativity. I really like creativity. I love art, I love drawing, I like making my own jewellery, I really enjoy that side of things and so for me, I saw marketing as um, a means of being able to carry on doing that. Once I graduated the degree, I got this job that had nothing to do with my degree whatsoever and that was because I, I couldn't get a job at the time and it just so happened I'd been working in a place weekends whilst at university and they offered me a job long term. So that's why I was working there. But 
Uh, you know, I've got to say for any of you who are at university or you've, you're graduating or you've graduated, even if it was a couple of years ago, I had the thing that kept me up at night, the thing that stressed me out and made me feel so sick was I'm sat at this job that's got nothing to do with my degree. I have zero interest in it. It's really, really boring. It's going to be a tall tale trying to put anything on my CV from this place that shows I've got I've had any sort of real experience. And it, the one thing that stressed me out is that while I was in that job, I was for like the three years I was there, I was putting my CV out and I wasn't getting anything back because I didn't really have any experience on my CV. And that first stepping stone into getting a job is the most painful, annoying thing ever. The turning point for me came where I was in this rubbish job and I got given a project one day by someone who wasn't actually in the office. I think they were off sick. And the project was to um, brief the creative agency, the marketing agency, on a design of this banner that we wanted doing. It was like, I can't remember exactly what it was for. I think I, I think it was like for a new product out. And I started talking to the agency on the phone and I just got so into it. it they were so inclusive in terms of making sure that I was involved in the design and I found it so much fun. And the whole time I was working on this project, I was, I was kind of excited about going into work because I was doing something that I liked. And then while I was there, the agency after a while said, do you wanna come into our um, agency offices and work with us while we get the job finished? And I was like, yeah, cool. So thankfully my boss at the time let me go because that I didn't think they were going to, but I was able to go into this particular place. And I tell you what, it opened my eyes I was, I walked around this design agency. It did not look like your typical stuffy office. It was kind of, if you if you work for agencies or if you've been to one, it's kind of, you know, you know the, the interior brick walls with no paint on them and the funky chairs and the kind of crazy vibe that's going on. It's very fast paced. That's what I saw and immediately as soon as I saw it, I thought this is what I wanna be doing. So that for me, that was how I knew what I wanted to do. And that took two to three years after leaving university. I think it was about two, two to three years. It took two to three years after leaving university for that opportunity to happen. Because prior to that, I was sat at my desk at this job I hated, sending out my CV, and I didn't really know what job I wanted. I was like, I don't wanna go from one boring job to another boring job. Um, so that's what I did. And also, the other benefit to doing that is the girl that I was working with there, I spoke to her about it, and she was so helpful. I was like, if I wanted to work in a place like this, what could I do? And she explained to me that you've got the creative team and you've got the um, like the project management accounts team. And she was really helpful in telling me the entry level job title of someone doing that job in an agency. As soon as I knew it, I was straight back at home that night and I was on recruitment websites and I was looking up jobs for that job title. I didn't even know what that job title meant before. I'd been seeing it online when I'd been looking for jobs, but it sounded really random and I just was overlooking it. And now all of a sudden, now that I knew what I was looking for, I was able to tailor my CV a bit better and I was able to be a lot more proactive with the jobs I was going for. But eventually I did get a, a job interview at an agency and as soon as I went there and I looked around, I was like, oh my God, I love it. I feel really excited just to have the thought of working here. And I got the job and I never looked back. That was the point where I thought, this is what I want to do in life. It really interests me. Um, one of the things I really love about working for agencies is that they can be, most of the time, the ones I've worked in, they're really high pressure. So you'll get a brief in the middle of the day and the person who sent you the brief will want it turned around super quick. And although it can be quite frustrating, I always have really enjoyed that. So for me, I got to a point where honestly, and I never thought this would happen. Sunday nights, I would be so excited at the thought of going into work the next day because I got on with everyone. Every, we were all kind of like friends. We all used to socialize, but also the work was, it was so, um, how to describe it? The work was so um, rewarding. You'd, 
I used to get to the end of the day and think, how did I even make it through that day? How have I got so much work done? And it's really high quality work. I kind of felt really invincible when I was working in these places. And even now, now that I do it from home, I still have that, I still have that real like attention to detail where I really pick things over to a point where no one else even notices but I'm really like that and that's why I really like doing the job that I do. So that's the first thing I'll say is I think that if you're trying to figure out what your dream job is however wh wherever you are on your life journey and please don't think as well I always say this I feel that when it comes to um like finding the right job for yourself or deciding what it is you want to do in your life. As soon as you've surpassed 30, I feel that for a lot of us, we think, oh, what's the point? You know, because if I have to go back to university and retrain, that's going to be money. And am I a bit past it now? Or is there any point? Or maybe you've been doing a certain job for years and it's just not really doing it for you. But you're thinking, well, I've if I quit this and go and do something else that actually interests me, I've got to start at the bottom of that thing that interests me before I'm even earning what I'm at now. And I think that only you can answer the question, but I really would encourage any of you who are doing something that you don't like, or you're listening to this and you're thinking, I really know deep down that my, my life situation, even if it's relationships and it's not work related, if it doesn't make you happy, then it's always worth the upheaval every single time and I'm constantly doing that with myself now. I have got a vision board that you've seen before and I'm constantly updating it with where I want my life to be and what goals that I have and that's really important to me because if I don't know what I'm aiming for then it's really easy to get stagnant and also I like to constantly question myself. You know last year that's what I wanted but is it what I want this year? Do I want to uh, like completely scrap that or push the goal a bit harder and I think that if you get to a point in your life where you can do that with yourself and, and really question where it is that you're at and just think am I sucking this up because it's okay or even though it's scary could I push myself to achieve what it is that I really want to achieve I just think it's always worth doing that so the first thing is getting that experience or getting that insight, being given that opportunity, that chance to see what it is that you might want to do instead. That's quite difficult because if I hadn't been given that chance by that girl, I, I still believe I would have ended up where I am now because I feel like life kind of works like that personally. Um, but I think it would have taken me longer to get there. And if you don't know what it is that you want to do in life, if you haven't been given the opportunity to see what you might want to do, then forgive yourself for not knowing. It's like, before I ever went, walked into a place like that, I didn't even know it existed. So how would I possibly know that's what I wanted to aim for? All I knew is I like creativity, I love working with other people, and I like a fast paced environment. I didn't know that an agency would tick those boxes. So try and get life experience. Try and if there's anyone in your family or extended friends, who works in a sector that you think you might quite enjoy, pick their brains on it. Speak. This is another thing I used to do. There was one person, one of my friend's mums, did a job that I thought I would like and that she was so good. Like I asked her a million questions about it. What's the work life like? What does your average day look like? And that really helped me understand whether or not I wanted to do it. The other thing you can do, you've now got a lot more people on YouTube making YouTube videos about all sorts of things, but also about work. Now, I'll give you an example. I actually watch a guy now who works for a law firm and he does videos on law and it's fascinating because he'll give you example cases and he'll talk about how they won or lost them and um, he'll kind of question you. He'll, he'll be like, what in the law means that I can't prosecute for this? And you're kind of like learning as you go. And that's a really good way of being able to get an insight into someone else's world and figure out if you like it or not. So use the internet. And if you think there's a sector that you would quite enjoy, try and find videos on it from people who work in that sector who might talk about it and share their experiences. If you have got a certain lifestyle in mind or if you know you want to be able to take a holiday every year or have a family or be able to have a social life, 
then try and pick a job that will support that but at the same time I also think don't pick a job just because you think it's going to pay well so don't go and do a job that you cannot stand but hey the money's good because oh, I'll tell you what that that's that can work out fine but after a while it will really grate on you and I think trying to find a middle ground where the money supports the lifestyle that you want gives you a good quality of life but at the same time you actually enjoy the job you, that you're doing is the best thing to do. The final kind of thing that I want to say with this is don't stress too much about it. When uh, How many of you have seen the film from I think it was from the 90s and it's called Sliding Doors with uh, is it Gwyneth Paltrow? That film, I really feel that that film in many ways is so similar to life. In that film, she basically misses a tube train in London by a matter of minutes. And the film shows two versions of her life running parallel. One version of her life is what would have happened if she'd made it onto that tube train. And the other version of her life is what happened when she missed it. And you end up seeing that in both in both timelines she ends up doing the same thing at the end of end of it she ends up in the same place only her pathway to get there is very different depending on that one moment and i really feel that in life a lot of this stuff is pre-written but you that doesn't mean that you can kind of sit on the sofa and go well what will be will be i'm just going to sit here and wait for it you do have to put in the the hard work and the effort if it's meant to be if you're meant to be at a certain place if you're meant to be doing a certain thing I feel like it will happen anyway and I always think that with the job that I'm doing now I think whether that whether that experience that I got early on happened then or a few years later I still think I would have been where I am now it just might have happened later on in my life so I want to say to you that wherever you are in your life if you're starting out or if you're part way through your your career and you're just like thinking about what else you want to do don't stress too much, but don't get, don't, don't be lazy, but don't worry about it too much. The best thing you can do is chip away at a plan, have an idea in mind. Remember that thing that I was telling you, which is to try and get experience, because if you, let's say you like animals and you want to work with animals, but you never have before and you have no clue what sort of job you could get besides a vet, which might not be suitable, then you go and get a job one day volunteering in an animal shelter that might open your eyes to, wow, yeah, I really enjoy this, but if I hadn't had that opportunity, I wouldn't have even known that this kind of place existed. So try and get experience where you can. So that's how I figured out what I wanted to do in life and how I've got to the point I am at now. I don't know where I'm gonna be in five years time. I'm really open-minded like that. I'm not the kind of person that gets a job and thinks I'm just going to sit here now for 20 years like that's that's not me I'm constantly questioning myself and I really like change actually I really enjoy change um so I don't know where I'm going to be in five years but right now this is what I'm doing and if you are feeling what's the word if you're feeling restless in your life and you just want to change then take a bit of time out of your day get yourself a notebook and write down some things that you enjoy doing. Research on YouTube, go and look up different sectors and see if you can find people that have got channels that talk about their job. That could be a really good way of doing it. And where possible, maybe even volunteer. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.